Welcome back. Now it is time for top picks. Your first one is Neo Performance Materials. The ticker here is NEO on the TSX. I'm looking at a forward PE consensus on the Bloomberg terminal of 7.85. Where do you stand on the business? Right. So first of all, uh, Neo Materials is a, a global leader in the processing of uh, rare earths uh, to make uh, highly engineered um, industrial materials. Uh, and magnets uh, used in uh, micro motors, for example. And their main customers uh, are in the automotive, electronics, and uh, especially chemical industries. Um, and NEO is um, a global leader in supplying the automotive industry. And uh, uh, this presents a huge opportunity uh, for them to supply magnets uh, for the EV market as well, uh, for traction motors, since uh, you know EV, uh, EVs use a lot more um, micro motors. Uh, in the car, and uh, they're in the, they just announced that they're building a new plant in Europe to supply the European EV market uh, with uh, EU government grants and long-term contracts by some of the European car manufacturers. So um, the other big piece of news is that a strategic buyer called Hastings Technology out of Australia just acquired 20% of the company at $15 a share, and I think the shares are trading around $10 now. Um, and Neo is a very profitable cash generating company with uh, no debt. And we have it trading closer to sort of four times EBITDA right now. Uh, so it's a very sa safe way to, to gain exposure to the growing rare earths market and uh, EV industries. And it also is a potential takeover candidate. Uh, we own this stock uh, 12 years ago and made um, you know close to 10 times our money when it was previously acquired for $1.3 billion by uh, Molly Corp in 2012. Uh, and then it went public again in 2018. So uh, if you look at the enterprise value today, uh, it's only around $350 million. And it's a much better company today than it was back then. So there's a huge upside. And it also pays a dividend of around uh, 4%. So very unique company uh, in the world, uh, uh, really well positioned. Uh, uh, in in their space, and uh, yeah, I think there's tremendous upside going forward. Some very smart institutions do own this stock uh, uh, as well, and uh, insiders, uh, you know, were buying uh, fairly recently as well. So uh, they believe in the company. They were very well managed. Okay. Next, we've got Texas. This is ticker symbol TCS. Quick look at the Bloomberg terminal. I can see that the price target for the business was recently cut by Cormac Securities as well as Raymond James. Where do you stand on the business? Right. So we've owned Texas for a long time. Uh, you know, they're a um, Montreal-based supply chain management uh, software solutions provider. Uh, they're, so they're right in the sweet spot to help manage the supply chain issues many companies are facing. Uh, their main clients are in the healthcare industry, healthcare networks, so think hospitals and clinics, mainly in the U.S., where they're basically, they dominate that vertical. Uh, and they're also sort of uh, complex uh, distribution businesses, uh, logistics and retailers. Uh, their solutions are end-to-end, -end, so from purchase order management uh, right through to inventory and warehousing to accounting and analytics. Uh, we recommended this stock um, back in 2019 when it was uh, $15, and it became one of the 30 top performing stocks on the TSX for the next three years. I think it hit uh, over $60, um, and the share price has pulled back. Uh, to um, you know half of what it was, even though the company has grown tremendously. It's generating record sales, has a record backlog, a robust pipeline of business. It's actually profitable, a profitable tech stock with good margins. Um, so uh, we, we really think this, this company uh, deserves a much uh, a higher multiple, closer to its peer, peer group, which is trading uh, um, at a significantly higher multiple. Uh, and um, we think the, the stock uh, you know, has a good path forward to uh, to the $100 level over the next few years and also is a likely uh, takeover candidate down, down, down the road. Do you see any sort of catalyst moves that might push the stock price higher? Well, I think there, um, the, you'll see margin improvement, uh, not in the next few quarters because they're reinvesting heavily in the business. Uh, they have a huge pipeline of uh, business opportunities. Uh, but once uh, the margin uh, starts to expand, the gross margin and EBITDA margin, 
uh, over the next year or two. Uh, I think uh, that'll be that'll really start moving the stock. Meanwhile, the business is booming, uh, higher percentage of recurring revenues okay. uh, as they migrate their clients uh, to the cloud. Uh, so um, I think this company uh, will be re-rated uh, uh, over the next year or two. Okay, finally, we've got Northland Power. We've got about 90 seconds here, ticker NPI. What do you like about this company? Well, it's a leading renewable uh, power uh, producer, global leader in offshore wind, the significant operations in Europe, uh, and they're going you know, to benefit from the acceleration of Europe's um, transition to clean energy to get off the uh, dependence of, on, on Russian gas. They have huge growth projects in the pipeline right now in Taiwan, Poland, and Germany. Uh, we're expecting their um, power generation to double over the next seven years and uh, EBITDA to double as well. Um, and it's trading at a low end of its um, valuation range. Okay. Uh, and uh, growing significantly. So. We think there's many catalysts coming up for the stock, including selling down part of its stake in the Taiwanese project, um, and um, uh, that should move the stock uh, stock higher. Uh, okay. It's been come down because of the sell-off in utility stocks as well. So great long-term prospects, uh, the uh, uh, transition to clean energy. Okay.